Future Chevreux mains. I have no idea of what exactly you paid off at Hoyoverse to force them to make your character so good, but I need that contact before Varka comes out because I need to do something similar. When I first looked at Chevreuse's kit, my early estimation of it was that she was going to be a decent character for a niche that wasn't really going to work well in practice. Then, when I actually got to calculate her to make this video, my expectations were completely shattered. To get into what she actually does, she is a character that requires a specific type of themes to be played correctly. These themes are compositions that can only include electro or pyro characters. In addition to that, she has specific elements in her kit that really emphasize the importance of overload on these themes. When most people first heard of this, the first thing they thought was that she was going to be kind of a Nilu, but for overload. Basically, it was thought that the, her presence on themes will make this elemental reaction called overload actually good. But that's not what is going on here, because the elemental reaction itself is not getting strengthened. Instead, overload getting triggered enables different elements in your kit, and these elements are great. But wait, only Electro and Pyro? How am I going to put my Kazuha on this team? What if I told you that Chevreuse can potentially fully replace all these strong Animo characters we got so accustomed to, and then some? It all starts from her first passive, which, after an overload reaction triggered by any character on the team hits an opponent, it will reduce his resistance to Electro and Pyro by 40%. This alone, by itself, is already replacing the most important supportive effect Animo characters have, which is the access to the Veridicent Vanilla set, which reduces resistance towards a specific element after a sword. Not only that, but this passive is also simultaneously reducing resistance for both Electro and Pyro, which is something Animo can do very easily on this team. The overload synergy doesn't end here, since the elemental skill also takes advantage of this elemental reaction to gain positive effects. In fact, when used after an overload, the whole version of the elemental skill will start a healing effect that will continuously heal the active character for 12 seconds. This will scale off of Chevreuse's maximum HP, and assuming you're building her with HP artifacts, it will heal the active character by a decent amount amount within a 10 or 12 seconds window. Compared to what other healers can do, it is not that great, like it's decent, but um, if you expect Chevreux to soul sustain in every situation, even in the scenarios where you take 30,000 damage per rotation, you might be disappointed by the healing. Also, after you use this version of the elemental skill, Chevreux's second passive will grant the whole team, specifically all pyro and electro characters on the team, so the whole team, an attack percent bonus that gets higher the more HP you have on Chevreuse, the more maximum HP. So, it is implied that she can be built with an HP% percent skill, but I have something to say against this. My counter argument against building Chevreuse with only HP artifacts for the purpose of making her heal is that her damage potential is actually pretty interesting, and losing that by picking an overly defensive build is kind of a shame. Also, I would argue that, despite you not necessarily needing more healing with Chevreuse built as a healer on team, Bennett would still be part of many of her best teams just because of how advantageous he is to most characters in the game, but we'll get to this later. So, regarding Chevreuse's offensive potential, she's not weak in the slightest. She has got big muscles, just like your Genshin scientist. Although, I guess you can't quite see them here because of my big ass sweater. I would probably describe Shibru's damage potential as relatively high. So, not high in a general sense where she's compared to characters like Xion Ling or Fischl, who for the most part only deal damage with their kids. Chevreuse is different. She heals you, she supports you significantly, and also deals decent damage, which is surprising because most units aren't lucky enough to get such a packed kit. I already mentioned her elemental skill, which, among other stuff, also deals damage, and she also has an elemental burst that deals damage very similarly to how Kirara's elemental burst deals damage, although I'd expect most of you to not remember or even know in the first place about this extremely forgettable character I just mentioned. Basically, big chunk of damage on cast, and then mines that will explode right after. On top of this, her Constellation 2 adds extra damage to her elemental skill, and the Constellation 4 is very interesting, 
because it allows the burst to nullify the cooldown of the elemental skill and it allows you to use it multiple times in a rotation. The damage by itself, if looked in a rotation-wide sense, is pretty good for a character like Shibruz, but what makes it especially interesting to me is that it is all happening in the first part of the rotation. Basically, before your carry even goes on field, you've got the possibility to get a lot of damage from your Shibruz, and this is what we call front-loading. Yeah, the magic word, it means money. Value. We actually got a similar case to this back in the day when Sarah came out and Raiden with her, and the spotlight regarding Sarah was definitely about the supportive capabilities, but she also had the same kind of front load damage abilities that made her shine more in practice compared to what was expected. All of this to say, if you want to build her as a healer, I can't physically stop you, but just know what you're losing. Since I just mentioned Constellations, let's just talk about the Constellation 6, which doesn't increase her damage, but her supportive capabilities. Basically, it will grant the elemental skill healing effect a final team-wide heal that procs when the duration of the healing ticks end, and on top of that, whenever this ticks heal an active character, that character will get an elemental damage bonus to Pyro and Electro. Each of these bonuses is of 20% damage, and if stacked up, it can reach 60% damage bonus. But pay attention, the stacks count independently, so if you get a stack at the first healing tick, and a second stack at the second healing tick, the first stack will elapse earlier. Of course, this Constellation 6 is very strong, but it doesn't make or break her kit, because while it adds healing and also damage bonus, the rest of her kit is very good, so it's not like you got a Ferrozen situation where if you don't get Constellation 6, you'll feel bad about this character. It's great, but it's not make or break. There is no better way to grasp the full potential of a supportive character than to analyze it in a team-wide sense, so let's do it. When we're talking possibilities between Pyro and Electro characters in a team-wide sense, we're generally opening a Pandora's box because the possibilities are truly endless. Now. Obviously, I'm not going to analyze every single theme, don't overestimate me, please, but I'm going to show you some examples that will paint a pretty clear picture, in my opinion. The first theme I've looked at for Shiru's is Raiden Hyper, and so the Raiden Hyper with Bennett, Kazua, and Sarah, and the reason I did that is because it's very simple to make this change between Kazua and Shiru's from a calculation perspective, because every other character in the team is either Pyro or Electro, so it's a pretty obvious fate for Shiru's. The results for this were pretty similar to what I had expected. If you have a Constellation 6 Shiru's and you build her for damage, then the outcome is going to be very similar to what Kazuha can do from a single target damage perspective. Single target is the key word here, because Kazuha is the king of AoE, and by removing him from your team, you're putting a huge handicap to what you can do, realistically. This AoE advantage isn't something that can be easily defined by calculations in an objective sense, but it is something you will realistically feel in real game scenarios. But it is impressive enough for Shebrus to match Kazuha in this archetype, because you have to understand, this is the quintessential Raiden Hyper team, the team that has dominated the game at a Constellation 2 level for Raiden for the longest time, and Kazuha has been the protagonist of this team in terms of being the Animo character for the composition. If, for example, you replace Kazuha with Sucrose, you're losing a lot of damage, something that isn't happening if you replace Kazuha with Shebrus from a single target standpoint. Even if you remove Shebrus Constellation 6 from the equation, she still stays much higher compared to Sucrose, which is a very good feat. And look, on this specific theme, Shebrus is even penalized compared to the norm. Her resistance reduction effects have pretty short duration, and you really need to keep triggering overload in the rotation to keep them up, which isn't possible on this specific team because there is no continuous pyro application. Basically, what will happen is that Raiden will lose damage midway through her window, so it is impressive for Shebrus to match Kazuha even in this scenario. Let's try to make it better for her then. Generally, the rule of thumb with her teams is that you either need a continuous off-field pyro applier if you're playing an electro or on the other hand, if you're 
playing a pyro carry, you need an off-field Electra player that is continuous. So, just to be clear, characters like Xiaoling or Fischl. I tried to look at some wacky teams that really surprised me when I actually calculated them, and one of them was the Yuimiya Fischl Chevreuse Bennett team. I know, I know, Yuimiya needs a shielder, blah blah blah, but listen, just in theory, this team performs very well, so from a damage perspective. Due to how Chevreux's Constellation 6 works, you won't be able to get high damage bonus on both Yomiya and Fischl, because it only applies to the characters that get healed, and with Fischl you won't stay on field nearly long enough to get a lot of healing ticks. Even one would be lucky. But the team performs very well regardless in theory, and the reason is that you're getting consistent resistance reduction for both your main damage dealers, and, in reality, for the whole team. For Animo characters, it is really impossible to achieve the same results because of how the Pyro and Electro gauges stay on opponents, and as such, Chevreux is unique here. If you replace Bennett with somebody like Toma to get a shield, the damage predictably really falls off. See? This is what you wanted. You skill issued shield dependent player. You get zero damage in return. Jokes aside, even if you replace Yuimiya with somebody that is more playable without a shield, like Klee, the team damage still stays very high. I've also been brave enough to launch Sino into this context, and predictably, it is not very good. Sino just loses a lot of his value outside of Dendro teams. But yeah, she does a lot of good things, which make teams that were previously not that good quite playable now and probably pretty decent. Regarding her builds, I really haven't finalized in-depth calculations about that yet, but I put my assumptions in the graphs I made about the teams I've shown, so if you build her like that for those teams, she'll feel great. I will definitely make another video about her before she comes out, but for now, peace.